This is the Making Noise podcast. And I do think that art making plays a critical role in that. I think it is needed. I think it is necessary. I think it's fundamental to the idea of our survival as a species that we continue to create stuff. Sure. Because in creating stuff, in sharing it, in understanding that other human beings see and understand what we might see and understand that maybe we'll come closer to that idealized, continuous, empathetic state that human beings, I believe, should strive for. I like that. That's, that's, um, oh. And that's as close as I'm going to come to a thesis statement tonight, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a great one. To, I think that's know. it. I think that's it. That's as close as I'm going to come with two fingers of scotch on a Wednesday night to putting forth my, my personal philosophy. What is, what is something that you would like to see in the most immediate future in regards toward this thesis? Like, let's, like, immediate future. So let's, let's make that, like, I don't know, a year. I think a great first step would be for everyone to get stoned. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I got to be honest. I was not expecting that. I think that would be a great first step. I think that would be a great first step. So, uh, so basically letting loose, freeing the mind, like, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's just take a step back and let's just appreciate that we're here. Yes. If I, if, if, if drugs were absolutely legal and I were a billionaire um, I, I would absolutely send 10 tabs of acid to every citizen in the United States. There you go. There you go. I think that's right? a, that's a solution. Yes. I think, I think everybody's simultaneously ingesting five grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms would radically alter the state of human consciousness in a positive, fundamentally positive way. Now, are you... <laughs> Are you familiar? You weren't expecting this shit from me tonight, were you? No, Here not at all. I, I, I love everything. I wasn't expecting any of this conversation, and I mean that in a good way, too. <laughs> Perfect. Great. I'm going to pour more scotch while we're at it. Please. I'm, I'm actually at that point, too. Um, yeah. do, you, do you follow the comedian Bill Burr? Oh, 100%. Yeah. This makes me think of his bit that he said a few times, which I particularly enjoy, which is... Uh, uh, a certain amount of the percentage of the population has to be eliminated, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is such a Bill Burr line. That is such a Bill Burr line. So, in, yeah. so my thought, <laughs> maybe this is me being cynical, um, in, in sending 10 tablets of acid to every person in the, in the world, right. something bad is going to happen to a certain select few people. Would you adopt that Bill of Burr mindset where it's like, all right, well, someone needs to be eliminated? <laughs> well, I mean, at least they might go happy. But right. actually, I don't think it would. I, I think a lot of people would just stop and recognize how malleable time is, how much time they actually have, and the embarrassing wealth of resources that we all have available to us. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I have to completely piggyback on that. Like my, um, the the cell phone, the smartphone, the cell phone, the smartphone, yep. I think is this is um, the most undeniably um, just useful resource that we have. Yes, and, yes, it is. And I think anyone who has one, which most people do, uh, yep, has potential. Yes, for whatever. And, and obviously there are obstacles and certain barriers that certain people experience in certain ways, but having that, you have the literally almost the world. Yes, you're just absolutely, you know? Yeah. I, uh, this is a vulgar metaphor, but I, I like to think of cell phones as technological masturbation. Oh yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely healthy. It could be so positive. It could be such a tool for discovering who you are and what you need and what you want. Mm -hmm. um, if you spend all of your time doing it, yep, 
you might miss out on some things. Right. Um, and so it's like any other technology, um, it is it is morally neutral. And I feel the same way about psychedelic substances. They are morally neutral. Um, it is a technology. Mm -hmm. It is a technology that we can use to expand our sphere of consciousness. Um, and if we use them in an enlightened and sensitive and careful way, I think the benefits can be extraordinary. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, they say there's a war on drugs and yet there's a drugstore on every corner. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't like to think of the fact that uh, any civilization makes decisions about any culture makes decisions about its drugs. Mm -hmm. um, there are drugs that it accepts and then there are drugs that it forbids. Mm -hmm. um, and the United States is absolutely a drug culture like so many other cultures around the world it just so happens that our drugs are caffeine alcohol and meat those are our drugs in fact so many unions have prescribed drug breaks in the form of the coffee break we don't bat an eye about that oh my gosh don't talk to me until i've had my coffee in the morning we are ingesting a drug caffeine that's totally fine. You and I sit here and we drink scotch. It's fine. That is an approved drug. Right. But then there are other drugs that we forbid. Um, and so any culture can, can, oddly enough, be defined by the drugs it forbids and the drugs it permits. Um, and so, you know, I think it's, it's interesting to note that the drugs that the United States tends to forbid, a lot of them are substances that are recognized in so many other parts of the world as expanding consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's really peculiar. And what's unfortunate is that our language is really limited. We use the word drug to talk about aspirin, psilocybin mushrooms, and crack. Right. Yeah, it's an umbrella sort of term. That's an umbrella sort of term. Consider the nuance of language that we apply to so many other aspects of our existence, and yet when it comes to these substances, they fall under the umbrella drug. Mm -hmm. And I think that does us a grave disservice as we seek to progress as human consciousness growers, as we seek to expand who it is that we think we are and how we relate to other human beings, you know? Um, so I think, there's, I think there's a reckoning coming, um, you know, and... Obviously, the war on drugs started as a as a racist ploy to disenfranchise people of color in the United States. And frankly, it's continued that way over the past 50 years. Mm -hmm. Consider how many people of color in the state of Florida alone who are not allowed to vote in the 2020 presidential election because of felony drug charges. Mm -hmm. That's a little political soapbox of mine. But um, I, I, I truly believe that, um, you know, again, we think of we, you know, in, in the United States, we go to intoxicants that are permitted. And so we think about ingesting alcohol before we play a big band gig. We think about ingesting alcohol before we sit down to r work on a string quartet we're composing. Mm -hmm. um, we think nothing of that, and yet somebody suggesting, daring to suggest that we ingest a few grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms to possibly expand one consciousness, one's consciousness and one's sense of empathy with other human beings before engaging in creative arts is a bit foreboding. I find that peculiar. Mm -hmm.